Go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 29th episode of the Customer in the Service. I'm Sean Petrowski, here as always with my co-host, John Lamazny. How are you doing, John? Hey, Sean, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, really uh, chock full episode tonight. Uh, we're going to be discussing hosting providers and the service uh, that they provide. And uh, we're also going to talk about T-Mobile. And we'll have uh, probably a few updates for you and uh, possibly discuss what we'll be talking for our uh, final episode of the spring season next week. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So, uh, like John, I am a user of a hosting provider. My hosting provider is a company called DreamHost. DreamHost? Uh, yes. That's one I haven't heard of recently. And uh, I've been with them since 2005. I run my personal website on there, and uh, I've run other side projects, you know, personal side projects or paid projects from my DreamHost account. Um, Uh-oh. Did I lose you? No, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, I've always felt that my hosting is kind of expensive. I pay about $120 for the year. That doesn't include any of my domain names that I have registered. And, uh, you know, I've often thought about switching to another provider, but I know that a lot of providers have not exemplary service. I've heard a lot of complaints from di about different providers, so I've been wary about it. So... Um, I understand, John, that you have a very strong uh, opinion of your current provider and have a lot to share about that, and uh, I'd like you to, to get us started on this topic, if you could. Sure. So uh, I'm, I'm actually a little bit upset right now for a few reasons, but um, in particular, I'm upset because I had an interaction with my new host, who I have recommended to a few people because uh, I, I like a lot of things about them. I like how much support they have for open source software. They're cPanel based. And so uh, it makes it really easy for somebody like me to install uh, multiple databases, multiple uh, services, multiple uh, WordPress instances, Drupal, lots of other kinds of things uh, with cPanel and um, cPanel usually has some one-click scripting solution. In some cases it's Scriptaculous or, or something like that. Uh, HostGator, who is my current host, my new host, uh, has cPanel and their, their Scriptacular or Scriptaculous or whatever is called uh, Quick Install. But anyway, PHP, LAMP stack based uh, services, meaning Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, Perl, or Python applications are relatively easy to install once you have the environment in place. And so, uh, same with Ruby on Rails and some other things where uh, if everything is just as it should be on the host, you can do essentially a one-click operation of filling in a form, hitting submit, and having a fully blown service installed. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Because if somebody comes to me and says, I'd like you to redevelop my website, uh, I'll say to them, do you have a development platform? Uh, or I'll say, oh, I see you're using WordPress. Do you have a development site for WordPress? And I'll say, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'll say, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just install uh, a new WordPress, and uh, we'll go from there. So, But even if I was just the average person who is working on my site, you would want to be able to install something like WordPress fairly easily so that you could either test something out or you could maybe offer a side service and give it its own site or whatever. The easier you can get up and running, the better, especially with something like WordPress. And it wasn't always like that. You used to have to know something about MySQL and you used to have to know something about um, administration. You don't really need to know that anymore with a good host who has something like cPanel installed. So anyway, I uh, learned about HostGator 
from a few people who I knew. There was a, a question that was put out on uh, Facebook on a group that I belong to that happens to focus on library technologies and WordPress. And the question went out, uh, what host do you use and why do you like it? And several people said, I used HostGator and I love it. And I said, oh, I'll keep that in mind. You know, and I looked at the price. The price is really good. Uh, they have a tiered structure of pricing. If you if you pay for three years in advance for your domain and hosting, you can get it down to like four dollars a month. And most people are not going to buy hosting for a year. They're probably going to buy it for three years. So uh, that's nice to be able to pay four dollars. But you have to pay up front, right? Uh, that said, I had to transfer my domain. Because I was, I had my files hosted and my domain hosted at Yahoo for a long time, for at least ten years, and that was because, as a matter of fact, at the time they had one-click install for WordPress. They didn't have much else, but they had that. And I liked Yahoo at the time. Ten years ago was a different Yahoo. We we should talk a little bit about Tumblr too. Uh, so. Anyway, um, I wanted to move from Yahoo to WordPress or to uh, HostGator, and there are other people who do exactly the same thing. There's Bluehost. Your host probably does a one-click install of WordPress. Yep. Most contemporary hosting services at least offer WordPress, but often offer a lot of other things. But HostGator came well recommended. So I overlooked whatever issues I I might have with a host, and said all these all these people who I trust recommend it. I should give it a chance. Uh, I've had to talk with. Uh, I had I had to chat twice with HostGator, and they do have live chat, which is nice, and it's relatively quick. The first time it took about twenty minutes to talk to them. Second time it took about three minutes, but it was for the same issue both times, which was transferring my domain, which is supposed to be automated. In other words, I'm supposed to be able to fill in the blanks, hit submit. I have to give them a code, which I get from my current host. Uh, I have to make sure the site is not locked. I did. I have to um, put it, make sure that my email is correct in the Whois database all of which I was able to do and hit submit and five to seven la days later this happens well I submitted the form I had to pay seven bucks even though they advertise free domain transfer for people who buy hosting I had to pay seven bucks just for the transfer meanwhile the entire domain cost is like twelve so my domain was no longer twelve bucks a year it's uh, 12 plus 7 or 8 which was you know I could have argued it but I didn't because again trying to be friendly trying not to be a cheapskate but that 8 bucks is like lunch for me right? Right. Anyway hope somebody got a good lunch out of it uh, but they have a checklist that shows what the status is of it and everything's like green 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 but it says is status unknown. You have to call to find out what's going on. And I don't even know that anything was wrong. It's it was that I chatted the tech support, and they said, "Oh, something went wrong with the setup or whatever. We have to resend out an email." I said, "Okay, wh what was it?" And they said, "Oh, there was a typo." And I said, "Well, there was no." <laughs> There's no typo in who is like how did how did a typo get in the picture? And they said, I'm not sure, sir, but there's there was a typo in your email address. I said, Okay. So some human put a typo in this. And he said, I I can't explain it, but it's resolved now, so expect an email in the next few minutes. I'll even stay on the line while you do it. And so, so I got the email that confirming, you know, that everything had gone through the way that it was supposed to. And uh, 
he said, okay, so in five to seven days, it was like a 20-minute conversation while he said, please hold on while we, you know, do some research. Please hold on while we do some research. He said, five to seven days, it'll be taken care of. Probably five, probably less. I said, okay. A week goes by. Go back to my domain status, transfer status. Nothing has changed. No email from anybody. No email from Yahoo. No email from... You know, it's a good thing I'm not like trying to overtake my domain because I would be able to fairly easily. Uh, and so I chat them because at the bottom of the information sheet it says, "Are you having trouble?" Question mark. You know, chat us. So I chat the guy, and this guy was not the genius of brain trust that the first guy was. Uh, and he he actually was that that person who gives tech support a bad name, where he was like correcting me mm. and saying, you know, oh well, you didn't ask about that. What you asked about was this, and telling me that that I was not looking at the screen properly. And um, so at one point, it, like for example, uh, I said. I don't have any status on my domain transfer. Can you tell me the status of it? And he said, it has been transferred. We own it now. I said, okay. I was never notified of that. No response. Uh, I said, I also have no evidence of that because when I go into the domain transfer status page, it says, we don't know what's going on. Call us. I said, okay. He said, you went to this page? And he sent me a link to the domain transfer. I was like, yeah. This, this page. And we're chatting, you know, it's like if we were on the phone, I, it would be a little bit more straightforward. But they, they prefer chat because they can probably handle four or five clients at a time. Anyway, uh, I said, well, if it's transferred, how come it's still going to my site existing at Yahoo? And he said, because you didn't uh, redirect the domain towards our servers, they're still pointing to Yahoo servers. I said, so did you suspect that I was going to buy file hosting from you, buy a domain transfer, and continue to use Yahoo for my file? Like, And he said, well, regardless of the, the, the logic of it, it's your responsibility to change the name servers. I said, okay. Um, it seems to me like there should be a little concierge service there that I, I shouldn't have to not know that the transfer has happened, know something about uh, DNS servers enough to go in and change the name servers to point from Yahoo to HostGator. Like, doesn't it seem like if I bought a domain transfer from you and I bought file hosting from you that you should suspect that I want to have my da domain domain name servers uh, transferred as well or as soon as possible uh, I I see where you're coming from but I think it's the nature of the transferring process to leave it as it is yeah and what I typically do in the case like you're describing if I am gonna switch the name server and I want the transfer to, to once it's complete to reflect the new servers automatically, I'll yeah. change the name servers first and oh. then transfer. I could have done that, but yeah. I didn't want to lose, I didn't want to potentially have them propagate and lose access to my server where it is now. Right, which is why when I, nine times out of ten, when I do a transfer, I leave the old name server in, and then when it's transferred over, I'll manually change it. And you you put the new servers ahead of the old servers. I erase the old the old servers completely and replace it with the new ones. Okay. So I understand where you're coming from, and I, I see why you would expect them to, to do that. But at the same time, I mean, from a from like a launching of, of a site standpoint, you know, you have to be very coordinated, and I think it's just a lot of transfer providers don't give you the proper information about what the transfer process entails. Well, that, 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 that speaks to the heart of it. Mm -hmm. They rely on my ignorance. Not that I'm ignorant, 
but they rely on the ignorance of the customer so that they can be paid for little tiny bits of information. At several times along the road, they were like, do you want us to do this for you? It'll only cost you three bucks. Do you want us to do this for you? It'll only cost you seven bucks. And it's like, I could go through the trouble to take care of those things, or you could offer it as a concierge, holistic sort of approach to what I want, which is service. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to be nickel and dimed to death. Part of the reason I went with your service was because you were low cost. So why are you doing it aggravating? Aggravating. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, the service itself, aside, and, and as a matter of fact, I don't mean to lump in the gentleman who I talked with today in with the first guy who was much more helpful. But there needs to be communication. Somebody should have sent me an email. Somebody should have... Uh, notified me that a change had occurred, whether it be Yahoo or whether it be, and don't even get me started with Yahoo, in the beginning of this process, Yahoo, my former host, I went to them, and they don't even have, they have a number, but they, you call it, and they say, we'll call you back. <laughs> leave, your, leave your number, and we'll get back to you because otherwise, you know, we have 72 people ahead of you and we only have three people on staff. So, uh, you know, uh, it's, it, that was aggravating and they never called. Never called. You'll probably get a call in a week. Oh, great. But, you know, because I need to talk to somebody to end my service with Yahoo, which I'm excited to do. <laughs> but I, I like this now that the DNS servers have not, in fact, I, I was kind of glad that it happened the way that it did because now I can continue to uh, migrate and back up anything that I'm doing on the Yahoo server. I already downloaded and backed up everything, but any like changes I make today, I can then you know export and make a part of my launch on HostGator. That all said, the service itself seems amazing. The C panel is really well stocked, and um, gives me all this functionality. That, uh, to, for example, I tried to set up Drupal on my Yahoo uh, web server. No, that doesn't happen. No, it doesn't matter if they have a LAMP stack or not. There were so many things that were missing from uh, functionality from a permissions from uh, from the control standpoint that I never would have gotten Drupal installed on Yahoo. And I often installed WordPress by hand on Yahoo because they did give you PHP my admin and they PHP is recognized across the server and um, it was easy to do a clean install of WordPress comparatively. But with Drupal, there were a lot more tweaks I needed to do as far as permissions, etc., that I was not able to do because Yahoo has really bad, very bad uh, hosting. And this is their business level solution for hosting. Like, I, they're, they need to, I think they need to close their doors. I really do. Yahoo. I'm, I just have to say it, you know. I just don't think... At, at some point, you need to take your money and run far away. Well, I'll let you say that. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, I've never had, um, you know, I've dealt with a couple hosting providers. I purposely actually keep all of my domain registrations with a separate company. That's smart. Who Do you use Hover? No, I use one and one Oh, yeah. So I have all, like, I have about... I don't know. At one point, I had like twenty-five domains. Now I'm down to like fifteen or twelve. Well, one and one does file hosting, do they not? Yeah, but I don't. Their pricing and I'm not, I'm not interested. Okay. Um, their domain pricing is good. I'm happy with that. And uh, I, I, you know, but I like I said, I kind of keep them separate on purpose. You know, to kind of avoid the things that you you've dealt with there. Yeah. You know, by not changing my domain provider. You know, I don't have to worry about transferring and things like that. Uh, I just change the name server, you know, if I change my hosting, and that's it. Uh, DreamHost, on the other hand, you know, 
I've used their support many times over the past, you know, seven years, six years, whatever. Always quick to get back to me. It's all it's all done through email. And if you want a phone call, it's more expensive. But I've never not had a problem solved through email. They've always been super helpful. They've given me incredible amounts of information. If I've, like, you know, I remember experiencing a site, a, a site slowdown for a lot. I just hit them with a, a ticket, and they got back to me in, like, 10 minutes. Uh, you know, they've moved me. They've moved all of my stuff from one shared server to another, you know, because in that, like, in my slowdown, I was like, hey, my site's really slow all the time. They were like, no problem, we'll just move you to a different server, and then my problem was fine. Nice. I mean, all, all kinds of stuff that they do. Never have they ever, oh, well, we'll do this for you, it'll be another $5, or we'll do this for you, it'll be another $3, nothing like that ever. That's ridiculous, it, right? Yeah, and that's kind of like a GoDaddy thing, if right, you ask it me. Wait, it reminded me of GoDaddy. Yeah. It, it reminded me of something that amateurs do. So, I mean, you know, DreamHost is, provides me with great service. They're very reliable. Uh, you know, at a time when I was running eight sites, you know, I think it was, you know, I felt like I was getting my money's worth. Now I'm really only running, you know, three. You know, do I need to be spending $120 a year for three sites? Probably not. Um, but I haven't seen anybody, you know, offer what, what they offer. Uh, I actually did recently have to do business with GoDaddy. I had to buy an SSL certificate for uh, for Ryder for the CIS department, and they have an educational discount on SSL certs. And I got to say, I had to do, had to be done all over the phone because it was an academic pricing thing. Yeah, and it was excellent. The guy that helped me was great. He was like real relaxed, like young guy. And was totally cool, and you know it went really smoothly. And I had some difficulties getting the SSL cert uh, set up because of some things at Ryder. <laughs> and uh, but they were real patient, and they really went out of their way to, to help me out. And so I, my experience with GoDaddy has been good. But I've worked with you know clients in the past that had GoDaddy services, and it was not pretty, and it was difficult, and you know I was not happy with what they did either. But um, my my argument with GoDaddy is more about their advertising. I I think that they're that they have a very sexist sort of front facing way of advertising, and and that influences the way that I feel about the rest of their services because that's the way that they choose to do their front facing. It's like um, I don't know. They they just go to the basest possible solution for advertising, and that that influences the people who make decisions about which host they're going to be represented by. Because I would be a little bit embarrassed to say that I used GoDaddy, because what people think of when they think of GoDaddy is like, uh, you know, giggly bikini-clad girl ads. It's like you know, I'd rather. It's the hooters of domain. It's the providers. hooters of domain. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not great. Yeah, it's actually. I have the when I set up the SSL certificate, you have the option of selecting the, um, you know, the authority, and it's either you can pick GoDaddy LLC or their, or actually their parent company's name, which is Starfield Technologies. I actually went out of my way to make sure that it said Starfield and not GoDaddy. Interesting. Because I didn't want to either be, I didn't want to be associated either. Because I have that same, that same feeling, like, like you know, it's just dirty. You know, I just I'm not. Yeah, you want to represent yourself. It's it's like the same. You know, you decide where you're going to meet somebody for a business lunch. It's probably not Hooters. You know? Right. Or else uh, it's not a business lunch. What one provider I want to bring to your attention is uh, Microsoft Azure. The uh, Azure platform, which is the Microsoft's cloud hosting solution, they're kind of. The, I did the pricing. Like, if I was to move my stuff from DreamHost to Microsoft, it would be the same price, basically. Did, but hold on. Do they have front page extensions? No, there's front page is not. Front page is dead. D dude, for, they have front front page extensions on HostGator. 
There's there's a button there that says turn on front page. Ex I yeah. swear to God. Well, believe, believe it or not, M Microsoft doesn't care what you run. You want PHP, you want my C MySQL, you want uh, Apache, you want Linux, Unix, whatever. You get to pick. Like, they're really, I mean, it's whatever you want. When you Hold on, hold on, hold on. So do you mean they're giving you servers? Well, you get to pick, like, depending on, you can, there's a million things you can do. You can, you can actually have VMs running. Uh -huh. And it's you can be a Windows VM, it could be a Linux VM, it's whatever you want. But like, and if we're talking about straight hosting, like we're you know web hosting. So hold on. So let's say I wanted to run a LAMP stack with a capital L. Mm -hmm. You're telling me I can install Linux on their service? Yeah. If you if you wanted, well, this is what I'm trying to explain. If you wanted to do a virtual server with Linux, uh -huh. you can do that. That's for their. Virtual, the virtualization, cloud virtualization solution. Do they have a virtual, is it their virtualization platform, or can you use, like, VMware? Um, I believe it's um, Hyper-V. Okay. So which is my, it. it doesn't really matter anymore, really, you right. know. But you can put whatever platform in the Hyper-V that you want. Uh, and they have, like, a bunch of pre-configured options. But it, for what we're talking about, web hosting... Or like web application hosting, when you when you pick what you want, it's literally like a list. You can say Windows or Linux. You click it, and then you can say ASP or PHP, SQL, MySQL. I mean, you go right down and you pick whatever you want. You click a button, it deploys it for you. Now, the reason I'm bringing this to your attention, actually, yeah, is because for somebody like yourself who, you know, needs who meets with clients, and maybe you need to do like a rapid prototype or something. They actually have a free account where you oh. can you can set up. I believe it's up to twenty or f maybe it's ten. Uh, what they call development sites, and you get like the full gamut of options for hosting. So that list I was telling you about, you have full access to that, and you can create all these little development sites. And basically, what the you, you're limited limited to a URL, like, so it's like, you know, John's page dot, you know, azure.com. Yeah. So if you're so just it's doing... it's like WordPress. Where's like WordPress.com. Right, but except it's, instead of running just WordPress, you can run whatever you want on it. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. And they have one-click installs for WordPress and, you know, you the typical, you know, cPanel stuff. And you can just do straight development. So if you just wanted to like write a PHP app and have it hosted temporarily so you could show an, a client how it works, you can go to Windows Azure, get a, a, an instance set up, dump your app in there, and you're good to go. And then you just destroy it. Um, and then if you want to go into what they call production, yeah. which allows you to use your own URL, then that's when they would charge you money. But if you're just doing development, and yeah, you want to just do sense. you want to just do prototyping sense. they they give you up to like 20 sites for free well i will, so I I will have to check that out cuz you should have you ever heard of heroku no i haven't what's that heroku is a development platform server and services so it's it's essentially a site that requires, for example, Git. Mm -hmm. It requires that you do some command line access. And for like a hardcore developer mm -hmm. who wants Ruby on Rails, who wants PHP present, who wants a whole bunch of like hardcore open source technologies and wants a platform that's sort of remote and available that they can have a domain point to, mm -hmm. Heroku is it. Okay. You can get WordPress to run on it, but it's it's really meant for like hardcore low level programming mm -hmm. uh, services, you know. So uh, the reason I knew about it was because somebody who I was working with was using them as a uh, hosting platform. I said, I've never heard of this. I don't know exactly what's going on. Uh, let me look into it. They were looking for help with their with their site, and I was having I was struggling a bit with their 
they had a CMS that I had never heard of too. Mm -hmm. And it seemed really low, it seemed really like light on features, comparative to something like Drupal or WordPress. Mm -hmm. And I sort of poo-pooed it at first, and then when I saw what they had running underneath of it, like all this amazing sort of uh, highly structured technology set, mm -hmm. uh, I was, I, I ate my words a little bit. I'm still going to help them to move off of it to go to WordPress, just because the, they, they need something simpler. But uh, Heroku was a cool, cool application set that I ran into. Interesting. Yeah, not uh, free. No. So I'm, I'm just looking at the Microsoft site now. There's It's it's 10 sites for free. Um, you know, and they support .NET, uh, JavaScript, straight Java, Ruby, Python, PHP, um, mobile technologies. I mean, all kinds of stuff. It's you know, it's kind of amazing. I mean, they're obviously trying to compete against Amazon. Yeah. And I think actually their uh, product offerings are actually more expansive than Amazon because you could not host a WordPress site with Amazon. That's just something you can't do. Um, yeah, it's true. And you can, Microsoft has a cPanel where you can just whoop, click it, done. And it's pretty amazing. Uh, and I strongly advise anybody uh, that's interested in this stuff to check it out because they really, you know, this their kind of cPanel interface that they use to configure everything is very, very impressive. Nice. Uh, so there you go. So hosting. Yeah. I mean, so the long and short of it, Hosts are a necessary evil. There are great ones and there are not so great ones. I, I actually think that HostGator is a pretty good one. I just had a really bad day today over this should have been a simple issue. Yeah, I actually, over my, my research over the years, HostGator has continually been a provider that has been regular, regularly praised for the service that they provide. Um, so, you know, you should feel good about, about them, you know, just because you had a bad day. You know, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. Are you there? Hello. Hey, are you there? I'm here. Hello. I don't know what just happened. Oh, well, it's okay. Oh. So, T-Mobile. T-Mobile. Uh, yeah, I've, I have never had a carrier who was not T-Mobile. Okay. I mean, I had Verizon for a little bit when I got a phone from uh, Ryder, mm -hmm. but that was a flip phone. My first ever phone was the Android G1. I was, I was an early adopter and was really excited about the technology. It was an HTC phone, and the carrier was T-Mobile. Mm -hmm. So that determined... I find a lot of early Android adopters, people who were excited about it, are T-Mobile users. Um, and that has not really changed. Mm -mm. No, because it seems as T-Mobile has actually always had a version of the flagship. What um, the hell is going on? You're hey, here. Yeah, weird. Oh, everything's fine. Uh, my Something weird is going on with my setup. Anyway. Okay, so, um, you know, T-Mobile has always had a flagship Android handset, and, you know, so why would you leave T-Mobile if you started out there with an Android, if the first Android handset, and you've been able to get, you know, every other model since then? Pretty much. I mean, if, especially if they have anything like openness. I couldn't, I couldn't get a Droid, but I don't really want a Droid. No. You know, I, I really like the Nexus phones, and almost every Nexus phone runs on T-Mobile. Exactly. So, so the thing, that I, reason I wanted to talk about T-Mobile is because they've actually switched their uh, service model from a two-year, you know, the traditional two-year contract that AT&T and Verizon, you know, operate under to now basically saying, listen, if you bring your own device... Uh, you don't have to have a contract, and we'll offer you a crazily discounted, uh, you know, voice and data plan. And if you need a device, 
uh, we'll we'll let you pick whatever you want. You you give us a little bit of money up front, and instead of locking you in with a two year contract, we'll we put you on a payment plan to pay off the full price of the phone. So once you pay the phone off, then technically you're released from your contract. Um, so this is a new approach that T-Mobile is taking. Um, you know, it's the the era of the subsidized phone at T-Mobile is gone, and now people are going to be paying for the full price of their phones. But they're not really realizing that actually the way that no. T-Mobile has it set up. Well, let, let me let me just say this is not new for T-Mobile. It's only being advertised newly. It's that this is something they have been doing sort of subtly for at least two years. And the reason I know that is because I. Uh, became a non-contract T-Mobile user over a year ago. Mm -hmm. And the reason that uh, I did this was I got an email from them in their normal communications that said, uh, you're using a lot of minutes because I was talking to certain people like all day. And uh, it's costing you and we want to offer you an unlimited data plan and it'll be, you know, 80 bucks a month, and we think it'll work out better for you. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. What I didn't read in the fine print was that I was not going to be a, contr a contract user of T-Mobile. So I ended my contract, had to pay like 200 bucks to get out of my existing contract, didn't really understand why. Uh, because they advertised it to me, like, why would you advertise me something that, you know, I, I was naive about it. But uh, the way that I found out that I was not in contract was I dropped my phone one day, had to go and get a new phone, got the Nexus S, the Galaxy S2, and it was like 600 bucks. And I was like, you're, you're going to make me pay full price of the phone? And they said, well, you're not under contract. You don't get subsidy. And I said, oh. I said, is there something else I could do? They were like, yeah, you can get a really cheap phone. <laughs> it's like, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. Or you, it, you probably could have signed a contract at that time, too. I could have, but I, I, I didn't want to because I didn't want to change my unlimited s stature. Right. Uh, I, because I liked the price, I just didn't know what the offset was. And the offset was when you buy a new phone, you're going to be paying for it. The benefit, though, is that now Google is offering like the Nexus 4 for what, 200 bucks? I heard 650. No. What are you joking? Oh no! Uh, you know what I'm thinking of the uh, the Galaxy S4 with the Google. The S4 is different because, yeah. 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 Uh, hold on for just a second. Mm -hmm. I just want to see what we're talking about here. Yeah, Google sells it, right? Yeah, if you go to uh, devices on the Play Store, you'll see what, what they make available. It's the Nexus 7, Nexus 10, Nexus 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, starting at two ninety nine. There you go. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. So that's non subsidized. Mm -hmm. Right. Open phone, unlocked phone. Mm -hmm. So chances are, if, if I would say if the if the Nexus Four was a little bit better phone, I'd probably already have it. I was hoping that they would offer an upgrade to the phone stats at I O. Which didn't I don't happen. think they did. Huh? No, didn't happen. Yeah. We didn't even talk about I.O., but, uh, yeah. It was not really about hardware this time. It was about software. And there were great, really good changes in software, but some of them are causing a little bit of growing pains even for you and me. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll get used to it, I'm sure. Well, uh, yeah, but I'm a fan. Uh, sh sh short, short and sweet. I'm a fan of T-Mobile's, uh, you know, migration away from contracts. Yeah, I switched over in November ish, October or November, 
I actually broke my Verizon contract. I play, I paid an early termination fee to get out um, because I had a whole plethora of issues all last summer with them and my phone. Um, so I was like, listen, I don't, I just don't want to deal with you anymore. And I took my chances with T-Mobile and I signed up at the time. They didn't, it wasn't this, uh, model that they have now, but it was, uh, I wanted the, uh, Nokia Lumia A10 Windows 8 phone and they had it. Uh, and I paid $150 the day I signed up. And basically what they did is they made the remainder of the phone's price basically is $20 of my bill every month. So my bill every month is like $75, 20 of which is paying for my phone. I can pay my phone off early. I could pick up the phone right now and pay off the balance. And then my bill drops $20 for the remainder of my time with T-Mobile. And I have the, I have the choice. I can, I can pick another phone and pay the $150 and then go on a payment plan, or I can just pay the phone outright and keep that, cheap, you know, that, that $20 cheaper a month, you know, plan that I'm on. Um, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do from now on is I'm, I'm probably not going to, I'm just going to buy phones outright, you know, oh, yeah. on, you know, get an unlocked, you know, maybe not from T-Mobile directly, just buy a, an unlocked phone, pay the 500 bucks or whatever, and just keep my, you know, my, then my bill becomes $54 a month for unlimited voice texting and data like how could you not how could you how could that not be a good deal you know what i mean like well and like the only thing that i've been a little bit excited about to the point where i considered moving away from t-mobile is uh... third parties like ting have you ever heard of ting no i haven't so ting is uh... the same people who made two cows yeah, yeah, also yeah. run hover right okay uh, speaking of domain hosts, right, and uh, Ting is uh, sort of a pay-as-you-go plan. You you pay into the service. You you make a, an estimate of how many minutes you'll use. You can, I think, get unlimited, but it it'll be relatively expensive for that plan. It's more likely that you would look at your existing plan, see how much you actually use, and find a good plan that matches it. And then if you don't use all your minutes, you carry over your minutes. And if you do you all use all your minutes and you need more, it'll just be at the same rate that you are paying at. The, One, the problem there is that you can't get whatever phone you want. Right, and there's another problem too. What? It's the Sprint network. It's the Sprint network, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's another company called like Revolution Wireless or whatever that's doing this too. Where they have a like one they only do one phone, yeah. and it's like you know it's got Wi-Fi calling and all this other stuff too. And uh, you know there's well, a lot of great that options. Was like the Firefox phone, or if it was the Ubuntu phone, maybe. Yeah. You know. Well, there's you know there's all these other options too, like you know Straight Talk Wireless, Net Ten, uh, you know Cricket. all these. What's that? Cricket. And cr well, crickets, you know. A whole other thing. Cricket. So, you know, there's a lot of options, but, you know, I, people like to talk a lot of crap about T-Mobile. I don't know. I mean, when I was telling people I switched or was going to switch, people were like, oh, my God, what are you, crazy? What are you, stupid? And my service has been totally yeah, fine. I don't have any complaints about T-Mobile. No. They, they, they cause me so little trouble that I don't bring them up. Right. You know, it's like... I, I think I had to make one support call ever, and the dude walked me through. I think I was on the phone for five minutes. He walked me through what I needed to do on my phone. It was like some code about six levels deep. And he was like, yeah, go here, go here, go here, type in JFF2612. Everything okay? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. It was beautiful. So T-Mobile, everybody. T-Mobile, everybody. And just so you know, they are, I don't know, I'm sure you know, they're, they're re-farming all their antennas. Uh, they, you know, they got this spectrum from uh, the AT&T merger failing. Oh, so, really? Yeah, so they're going to, they, they're in a unique position now with their 4G network. They're getting LTE also, like everybody yeah. else. But they have, they're going to have their, they're going to use their HSPA 
Plus network, which is technically 4G, as a backbone. So if you're familiar with AT&T or Verizon, AT&T and Verizon have LTE networks with a 3G backbone, okay? So the 3G backbone fills in the gaps of areas where there's no LTE. Yeah. T-Mobile has an HSPA Plus backbone, which is technically 4G, so you're getting faster speeds from the backbone at T-Mobile uh, than you would from AT&T or Verizon, and then they'll have LTE also, you know, uh, they're rolling that out now uh, across the country for the next, you know, year. So, Unfortunately, my phone is the Galaxy S2. It's a relatively old phone now, and it only has 3G. Okay. Well, um, my, my phone does have HSPA Plus support, no LTE support, so... Um, I'm not taking full advantage of that stuff either, but you know they're rolling out phones now that are already LTE enabled. Do you feel like there's a significant difference in your experience between 3G and 4G? Uh, yeah, actually, I do notice a difference from my phone when I was on Verizon, where I had 3G, and the HSPA Plus with my Nokia. I do see a big difference actually, uh, and LTE I know is even is even faster. So. Uh, whenever we do get LTE out here with T-Mobile and I have an, L- an LTE phone, I'm sure it's going to be uh, incredibly, incredibly fast. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, and that's another thing is that T-Mobile is one of the few carriers that does not ask for extra cost for tethering, especially for me because I have unlimited. Mm-hmm. Uh, unlimited, the reason I use air quotes, of course, is because I get five gigabytes of unlimited and then they cut me down to half speed. Right. That's what um, I have, too. Yeah. So, I mean, if I did a lot of tethering, I'd run through that... No problem. Uh, ...bandwidth pretty quickly. Yeah. But. Um, so, this week was the big Xbox event. Yeah, I heard I heard that uh, they are definitely... There was a big letter that went out that said, we definitely, definitely, definitely are not going to require an Internet uh, connection in order for you to do certain things on the Xbox, such as, uh, you know, uh, single-player games. Right. So the Xbox One announcement, and I haven't actually heard anything about it. What can you tell me? Well, what I was going to say is, I was like, we should actually focus on it heavily next week, because there was the big uh, event on Tuesday, and since then, Microsoft has actually been going on record with the different media outlets, and bits and pieces of information are trickling out. Uh, I would say 90% of which that has been coming out in this aftermath has been negative. Ooh. So, so I, would, I'm, I would like to wait till next week to talk about this because, like I said, every day there's something new that's coming out, and I'd love to have a full picture for our listeners next week. That sounds good. I've, I've heard some negative things, too. I didn't know that it was mostly negative. I, I've heard some really snarky comments about... Um, compatibility and having to buy a whole bunch of new equipment and yeah yeah it's not it has not been well received at all it's been overwhelmingly negative so uh, I'm really looking forward to talking about that next week uh, and then hopefully we can talk about Google IO next week too right yeah absolutely I will I will be better informed as to what happened at the Moscone Center I guess it was okay um, next week cool so our 30th episode and our final episode of the season will be about Google I.O. and the Xbox One. So uh, we hope to see you all next week. Any other little updates or tidbits of information, John? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you go to lamazny.com and it's not up, it's because I'm having some trouble uh, moving from one domain to another, or from one domain host to another. That's all. Thank you for that. Uh, I had a little tidbit that I wanted to share, and I'm trying to remember uh, what it was. Was it about River Horse? No, but I'm pretty excited about that. River Horse Brewing Company, for those of you that live in the tri-state area, is moving from Lambertville to Ewing, right down the street from my house, and I'm pretty excited about it. And... I don't know if you saw John, but they have this. They brought this graffiti artist in. I did see that. Who's decorating the walls, and it's pretty badass. Where uh, is their location? Okay, so if you're going down, not that I'm going, everybody. 
if you go down Ewingville Road, heading yeah. towards the municipal complex, yeah, there's that uh, industrial park right before the municipal complex, Graphics Drive. Across oh, that's the, where they're that's where they're going. Yeah, so the the mega group had a giant yeah. facility right there on the corner. Yeah, they're going into the mega group space because the mega group isn't there anymore. Wow. So they, they haven't changed the sign out front yet, but in two weeks they're moving from Lambertville to Ewing. Wow. And supposedly it's, there it's a, there's a whole bill there's billions of reasons why they're moving, but. Um, they're supposedly going to have like an eatery there, so you can like get food. And when they talked about their head chef or whatever, I was like, "You have a head chef." Yeah, and I think that's why. And they're going to make it like a performance space, so you can like go and like listen to bands and stuff. And it's going to be pretty awesome. And that's amazing. I, yeah, and so Good I'm really that. looking forward to it. My my girlfriend's looking forward to it. My, my friends, we're already talking about just riding our bikes there, and just hanging out. So. That's going to be a messy ride back. It is. It's a pretty long ride, too, but whatever. It'll be fun. All right. All right, man. So I will see you next week. Thanks, Sean, for number 30. Number 30. All right, man. See you then. See you, man.